Canada could be sitting on the biggest housing bubble of all time. That's Canada has a housing crisis and this government has failed to act. In my riding and the GTA, housing prices are up by 25% in the last year. This is Canada, the second largest country on the planet, known for its beautiful natural landscapes, Niagara Falls, and for having 80% of its territory uninhabitable, mainly due to the harsh climate with temperatures that can drop to minus 35 degrees Celsius in winter. Additionally, the Canadian nation holds one of the highest standards of living on the planet, with a high HDI and a per capita GDP of $53,000. However, various recent factors are seriously threatening the Canadian economy. One of these factors is the high cost of living. Since the financial crisis, property values in Canada have doubled. Many Canadians and immigrants cannot afford to buy a house, and when they rent, the cost represents a significant portion of their salary. But why have many Canadians accumulated debts to buy houses? Why are they giving up on buying them? Well, stick with me in this video and you'll understand everything. You know, right? Get some popcorn ready, hit the like button, and let's do this. In 2009, the government's stimulus program to support the economy and the central bank's interest rate near 1% encouraged Canadians to accumulate debt to buy houses. People are buying because they expect or fear that prices will continue to rise. Last year, the increase in interest rates slowed down housing prices, but most renters in Canada still feel that the dream of homeownership may be unattainable. According to the results of a survey, 63% of Canadians who do not own a home have given up on owning one. According to the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation report, immigration has been a significant driver of rental demand in recent years. Many newcomers to Canada initially rent homes instead of buying, which helps sustain demand for rental units. Canada is not alone. House prices also seem high compared to rents in most developed countries, such as the United States and the United Kingdom, which seem to have reasonable prices. What makes the Canadian real estate market an exception is its consumers, whose ability to borrow and spend may be near their limit. Canadians spend a larger share of investment capital on housing than on businesses. Business investment, in this case, is a combination of non-residential structures, machinery, equipment, and intellectual property, which together account for less than 10% of GDP. On the other hand, strong growth in housing investment has led to a 19% net increase in Canada's residential assets, representing 22% of national wealth. In the country, a large segment of people prefers to spend money on housing rather than on businesses. Who can blame them? It seems like a great plan until you start wondering where the jobs come from if there is no local investment. In the economy, business investment is crucial for driving economic expansion. In the long term, business investment, which increases the overall productive capacity of the economy through a larger stock of physical capital, allows for the production of more goods and services with the same level of labor and other resources. A survey involving 900 executives revealed that Canadians tend to be more cautious regarding risk compared to their neighbors south of the border. Some distinctive traits of the Canadian economy are influenced by the United States. Due to proximity and close economic ties with the United States, Canada has adapted its policies and economic practices in response to the influence of its southern neighbor. For example, American companies establish business operations in Canada primarily to avoid tariffs or taxes, but headquarters and intellectual property often remain in the United States. Many promising startups in Canada are being acquired by foreign companies, especially American ones. This is partly because when small Canadian companies go public by selling shares on the stock market, they lose tax benefits. Therefore, these companies are more susceptible to being acquired by large foreign companies. All these trends have contributed to making the Canadian economy less productive and innovative compared to the United States. To understand the difference more broadly, the average income in Canada is about $60,000 per year, 
while in the United States it's about $75,000. In other words, by crossing a few hours south, incomes increase by an average of over 20%. Americans work more hours than Canadians, about 6% more. While the average worker in the United States generates a value of about $74 per hour, the average worker in Canada generates only $57 per hour. Does this allow Americans to work with less effort, more efficiently than Canadians? Well, the main reason is the notable difference in the amount of investment in machinery, tools, innovation, and capital per worker, a concept called capital intensity by economists. Canadian companies invest about $13,000 per worker in capital, while their American counterparts invest $20,000. Additionally, Canada spends significantly less on research and development compared to other G7 countries. Productivity growth is directly related to the improvement of living standards and per capita income. The competitiveness of the Canadian economy remains at a lower level when compared to other developed economies. According to the IMD World Competitiveness Ranking, Canada ranks 15th out of 64 countries, marking its worst performance in the history of the study. Currently, the country is being outpaced by free market economies such as Singapore and the United States, as well as progressive nations like Denmark, the Netherlands, Norway, and Sweden, known for their robust labor protections and high wages. A competitiveness index does not exactly represent how competitive a country is, but rather measures its productivity. Although competition is often seen as a driver of innovation, efficiency, and economic growth, about 15 years ago, Canada demonstrated innovation even amid strong competition from larger and better funded competitors. To maintain its competitiveness, Canada needs to stimulate innovation and creativity, which is feasible given that the country possesses some of the most qualified and talented individuals in the world. The IMD report confirms this by positioning Canada in 11th place globally in talent. However, this doesn't help much if these talents are not utilized for the country's benefit. Many talents are heading south of the border, where they can receive higher remuneration. This is related to the phenomenon known as brain drain. Traditionally, Canada has implemented fewer government initiatives to promote entrepreneurship compared to some other countries. The country's reliance on natural resources for economic growth has discouraged investment in areas such as manufacturing, research, and entrepreneurial activities. The country has historically based its economy on natural resources, including mining, lumber production, oil, and natural gas. In 2021, these natural resources directly or indirectly accounted for 17% of nominal GDP and 51% of the total value of merchandise exports. However, its two largest exports, oil and vehicles, are declining and may continue to decrease. The automobile production never fully recovered from the 2008 recession, declining from a peak of 3 million vehicles in 1999 to 1 1.4 million in 2020. Therefore, growth mainly lies in the service sector, which has been thriving. In recent years, the financial, real estate, and communication sectors have grown rapidly. Toronto is now a new financial center in North America, with one of the largest concentrations of financial services company headquarters in the Americas. Despite economic challenges, Canada remains one of the strongest economies in the world, with an educated and confident population a favorable business environment, and a reputation as one of the least corrupt countries in the world. However, economic growth has lagged behind other advanced economies in recent times, and according to OECD forecasts, it is unlikely to improve substantially in the near future. Check out the video from Portugal, another country in a real estate crisis. As always, thank you very much for watching.